All right. Hi, everyone. I'm um, just going to wait for a few more people to join um, and then we'll get into things. So the first hour is going to be um, going through this workshop in Python and then the next hour we'll do a workshop in R. So if you're here for Python, that's great. Um, if you are interested in the R workshop, don't feel obliged to stick around. Just come and join us at um, should be about 11, maybe a few minutes over, hopefully. Not too much over, but um, we'll start in. Um, let's maybe give it a minute. Just let a few more people join, and then I'll um, I'll get started. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start now. Um, so hi everyone. My name is Louise Capener, and today I'm going to be uh, walking you through how to make some interactive visualizations. So um, in this guide, you'll be shown how to make. This should say two key types of interactive visualizations. So we're going to be making a very super simple basic bar chart we'll have a look a little look at group bar charts we might not be able to get to the stack bar charts and then we'll have a look at how to make an interactive scatter plot and then we're going to make another interactive scatter plot but we're going to make a drop down menu with it as well so we can switch between different data points um so i have 50 minutes um in this um walkthrough i'm going to leave about 10 minutes at the end for some questions um, so I might have to speed through a few things, but I've tried to include lots of code comments and uh, a lot of sort of explanations in the code. So you can go through this notebook in your own time and, um, you know, revisit some of the explanations. I just want to point out as well that um, there is a notebook in this uh, Python code folder that includes um, it's, it's folium underscore map. That'll show you how to make an interactive map of the UK. Um, I think it's showing um, the local authorities with the percentage of um, trans men. So if that's of interest to you, please check that out as well. But um, anyway, let's get started. So to create these visualizations, we're going to be using the Plotly package, which includes um, these high level modules, uh, Plotly Express and Plotly Graph objects. The data sets that we're going to be using today are from the most recent census, and they uh, involve the new voluntary question, which focuses on gender identity. So in particular, we'll be looking at sort of the percentages of these different uh, gender identities across the UK, but um, across England and Wales, sorry, not whole the UK. But we'll also be exploring the relationship between age and gender identity, as well as ethnicity and gender identity. But um, please do note that um, recently, um, so the 12th of last month, um, the Office for Statistics Regulation um, confirmed that the gender estimates from the, this most recent census they're no longer accredited, accredited official statistics, okay? So they've been downgraded to official statistics in development. So just do have that in mind when we're looking at our visualizations, um, you know, with some of the numbers and stuff. Um, but if you do want more information on that, uh, please check out this link here. It'll take you to an ONS page and I'll give you the updates on what, what's going on. For our purposes, you know, we're here to make some fun interactive visualizations. It's not too important. I just thought this was an interesting data set, but do bear in mind that, now been slightly downgraded so um just quickly check the chat yeah i did sorry forget to mention please use the q a box if you've got any sort of technical questions about the content or anything um and i'll try and get to those at the end so um the first thing that we need to start doing is importing the necessary coding packages that we're going to be using which have all the nice functions and methods that are going to help us achieve the aims of creating some visualizations but if you're not following along with this interactive notebook, so um, most of you will have followed this link here, which is going to launch the interactive notebook that I'm working on now. Um, but if you're working in your own um, computational environment and you've cloned the repo, just um, uncomment these two lines here and um, make sure you install the package. But for the rest of us that are following through Binder, we can go ahead and run our first code cell. Um, Yes, there we go. So you can see we've got um, our packages here. So we've got pandas. That's going to allow us to read in our data set. So our CSV file, you can use it to read in Excel and uh, all the file types too. And we are going to um, use this regular expression package um, to match some regular uh, expressions to strings. Don't worry about it too much now. I will go into it. And we've got our visualization packages, OK? So we're just going to give them these shorthand names so that we don't have to type out these long names each time. 
So the first data set that we're going to be focusing on is a really simple data set, and it just shows the total counts for eight gender identity categories across England and Wales. So we'll do a little bit of data cleaning, we'll remove some unnecessary categories, we'll clean our column names, and then what we'll do is calculate the percentage of each gender identity category, and we'll show it on a nice, simple, interactive bar chart. So um, some of you are going to be familiar with maybe how to read in the data set, how to do a bit of cleaning. But I wanted this workshop to you know, also cater to absolute beginners too. So I will be going through the sort of steps of how to read in a data set and how to clean it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use this um, pandas function um, to read in our CSV file. So we supply this um, function call in this uh, round brackets here. We supply it with our file pathway. So this is where the file lives in the computer. And you can see I've got my CSV file here. So let's go ahead and run this. What we can do is we can use this head command once our data frame has been created. So you can see we've named it DF because in pandas we call our data sets that we work with data frames. So if we run this head command, what it does is it just prints out the first five rows of your data set. So it's quite nice to get a little glimpse, but you can change this number here to show um, maybe the first 10 rows um, and that'll print out the first 10 rows, but we can use shape as well. Um, if we use this shape command, we can get the dimensions. So we don't actually have 10 rows here. We have eight rows by five columns. But we can see that there is a few things, in my opinion, that uh, need sorting out with this data set. So we have this redundant category here, does not apply, which has a count of zero. We're not going to want that on our bar chart. So we need to think about filtering that out. There's also these column names. Um, they have a lot of white space, a little bit lengthy. I'd probably want to get rid of these brackets and lowercase them. So we'll do a little bit of cleaning. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So um, the first thing we'll have a look at is our columns variable. So we print this out. It's just a list of our data frames column names. What we're going to do in this um, code cell here is we're going to use something called a list compre comprehension, which is this for loop uh, within the square brackets. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through. So I'm going to go through each column name in this list and we've got this regular expression here with this um, regular expression sub function. Don't worry about um, sort of like how gross and weird this looks. It's just a regular expression used to match certain textual data. So what this uh, expression does here is it's going to match any instance of brackets within our column names. OK, so it's going to match them. And what it's going to do is it's going to substitute um, that with an empty string. So we're going to get rid of anything within the brackets, including the brackets themselves. However, if um, these column names don't have any brackets in them, we're just going to keep them as is. OK, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to assign those new um, column names back to our list. So it overwrites the original list. So let's check if that worked. So you can see that regular expression has picked up those strings and um, that textual data that, that uh, matches this pattern. And we've substituted it with um, an empty string. So the next thing that we're going to do as well, we're going to use a second list comprehension here, and we're going to use this um, lower command that's going to lowercase each of our columns in the list. And we're going to replace any empty spaces, so any empty strings with an underscore. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have our finished result. Um, this is quite useful. Um, it's quite useful to get rid of white space if you're working with uh, dot notation. So when you're um, referencing your um, col columns and you might be referencing them like this instead of um, using bracket notation, which um, I do use throughout this workshop, it's just good to get them in a nice um, format. So it might not be totally necessary um, because I'm using these square brackets here, but it is just good practice. Um, so you can see that we have our data frame, right? We've got this does not apply. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to filter it by a specific condition to get rid of that does not apply. To do this, we've got this um, line of code here. And you can see that we have um, these square brackets here, and we're going to subset our data frame. It just means we're going to filter it. So we have our condition, 
And what we want to do is we only want to keep the rows where this condition is true. So we've got um, gender identity code not equal to minus eight. We only want to keep the rows in which that condition is met. Then what we do is um, we use this reset index function. And all that does is it just resets the index to a sequential order. So you can see um, we start from zero. When it comes to programming, um, we do start our indexes from zero. We don't start from one. So if I remove this row and I filter it out, then the index will start at one. Well, I want to keep it in that nice sequential order. That's why I'm going to drop. Um, sorry, that's why I'm going to reset that index. So let's go ahead and do this. And what we can do then is we can sort of reference our column here and we can use this unique function on it. And that's going to print out the unique values that I have in this column. So you can see minus eight, which is the um, gender identity code, but does not apply, has been successfully filtered out. I'm just going to check the chat, see how, see if we're all good. OK. Um, so we can do that with the gender identity category column as well. Let's use unique on that. And sure enough, does not apply, has been removed. Nice. But there's another thing that I um, don't really like. So when we're um, making any visualization, interactive or not, you need to think about, obviously, how things are going to be displayed. So for me, I want my gender identities on my x-axis, and I want my percentages, which we're going to calculate in a minute, um, of these categories. I want that on the y-axis. So um, I'm thinking about these tick labels. And for me, this is just too unnecessarily long. I could probably do some excessive formatting to get this um, you know, to be more um, sort of like bunched onto the page, but I don't want to do that. I want to just make these um, values shorter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the replace function. So what we're doing here is we are updating the values in the gender identity column. So you can see we've got a gender identity column here, and I'm using this replace function. So this function, it takes a dictionary of key pair of key value pairs as its argument. So you can see we have the round brackets for the function call and we have uh, these curly brackets. When you see curly brackets, um, we're working with a dictionary. OK, so the keys in the dictionary represent the original column entries that we want to change. So for us, we've got the first one, which is gender identity, the same as sex registered at birth. And the values are the new entries that we want to replace them with. So we're just going to change this to cisgender, OK, because it's a much shorter word. It's going to fit on that, that uh, X tick um, axis much better. And we've got this super lengthy mouthful gender identity, different from sex registered at birth, but no specific identity given. We're just going to change that to gender identity, different from sex. So this was a, the a question on the census was a, a um, I think it's a ask you, um, you know, is it, you know, are you the, do you identify with the sex registered at birth? If you say um, yes, then, you know, you don't need to write anything in, but there is an option um, if you say no to write in a specific gender identity, but this is for those that chose not to write anything in. So that's just um, a bit of context for that. So um, let's go ahead and do that. What we can do now is we'll run unique on that gender identity category column again. You can see we've got the original values up here, and sure enough, we've successfully changed them. So before we can uh, plot our data, we need to do a little bit of pre-processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that percentage of each gender identity category. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new column in our original data frame, and we're just going to call it percentage. And we're going to do a very simple calculation. We're going to take each row of our observation column. So each row here, uh, each value in this row, and we're just going to divide it by the sum of um, these values in this column. OK, we'll do the necessary uh, multiplic multiplication by 100, and then we're going to use this round function. So we'll wrap this calculation in a round function so that we can um, get those um, percentages to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and run this, and let's check if it's worked. Nice. So we've prepped our data, and we've got our um, y value all sorted now. So now we can actually get on to um, making our first very basic interactive bar chart. So um, to do so, we're going to use Plotly's bar method. So you can see here, I'm making this variable called fig. 
which is just the standard convention for visualizations, and um, they're normally uh, referred to as FIG, just like with data frames in Python, standard convention when you're reading a data set is to just call it DF. Same thing's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this bar method, and we're going to supply the parameters with the necessary arguments, which might sound um, weird, but it's pretty simple. So the parameters are just the variables in a function. Um, so we have data frame here, um, and the arguments are the actual values or the data that we pass to the function. So the data frame, that's a parameter that requires, would you believe it, a data frame. So I've put in my data frame here. We need our X value, um, which are going to be our X values, which will be the gender identity column, Y values, which will be percentage. We've got um, a title, which we can set. And I've also uh, set my X axis labels and my Y axis labels because I'm going to take the log of my Y values because um, we've got this uh, quite predominant um, percentage here. Um, and I want to be able to pull, still pull out some insights from these much lower values. So I am going to take the, um, I'm going to scale those um, Y values so that we can, you know, we actually see some bars um, apart from this um, main category here. So um, I'll set the width and the height, and I've got this parameter here, log underscore y. I'm going to set that to true. And then I'm going to call show on that figure. And let's run it. What was I going to show then? Um, so yeah, here we go. We have a very, very basic um, interactive um, graph. So you've got all your inter interactive elements at the top, which you can play around with. but um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something called tooltips, which are these little rectangular boxes that are popping up when I hover over these bars. So when you're using different Python libraries that are geared towards interactive visualizations, you'll often come across these tooltips. So these are small boxes that provide information when a user hovers over it. Um, so they, it could be you're hovering over maybe a point in a scatter plot, a bar in a bar chart in our case, or a segment in a pie chart. These are used to display information about that data point or object. Um, and in Plotly, tooltips are referred to as hover data. Um, so all interactive Plotly graphs come with this default hover data. So um, you can see that we've got the specific x-axis value and y-axis value. Um, but that's not extremely enlightening in our case. I mean, the y value probably is because you know we have scaled our values. It can be a little bit hard still to pull out the specific values. but in my opinion, it's not really useful for us to have uh, the X values there because we've got um, our nice um, X axis tick labels. But what I might want to do is I might want to add in some other useful data from the data frame. So we have this um, observation column. Perhaps I want to add in the raw counts from there, and I want that to pop up on my tooltip as well. Well, we can talk about how to do this. So. Um, there is a couple of ways to do it, and I will show you how to do both. Um, but when you're creating um, tooltips, what you can do is you can use uh, a dictionary. So you can see here, I've created my int underscore data, which is just my shorthand for it's interesting data. So um, you have these uh, this dictionary with key value pairs, and the keys represent the column that you'd like to show. And the value represents um, how you'd like the column data to be displayed. So you'll set it to true you want to show the column or false to hide the column. So um, I'm going to set observation to true. I'll keep percentage, but I'll set gender identity to false. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, unfortunately, we will have to recreate the graph now from scratch because we um, didn't initiate our, we didn't put anything in our hover data parameter in the first instance, because I wanted to, um, I wanted to show you the default behavior of the tooltip before I did that. So. Now that we have created this, we can supply it to the hover data parameter. And what you should see is we've now removed that gender identity um, category, but we've got our observation. But uh, if, like me, you think that looks a, bit, a little bit meh, um, for instance, I don't like that um, observation is not capitalized, if, and I'd also like to remove the um, brackets from that percentage. Um, and also uh, get a percentage after the um, actual percentage is shown. So what we can do is we can use this um, method called update traces. 
now when we go on into um other examples i'm actually going to not um sort of define the hover data in this way i wanted to do that because i want to show you two ways to do it but i normally just go straight to the update traces method because i've got much more control over my formatting there and i can still decide which um columns i want to which column data i want to show um so um you can use update traces to set your your hover labels and format how they appear so you can see that um those of you that have used html before could see that i'm using a little bit of html here so um i've got the columns that i want to show um and i've got my placeholder here uh, my curly brackets which is going to be a placeholder for my y value um and i'm going to make sure that's to two decimal places you can see i'm adding in a percentage symbol after it I'm just here, these, these B tags are just formatting the text in bold. So I want my percentage um, sort of uh, header to be in bold. And this here is just um, a line break. So it's just ensuring that um, this observation um, part appears on new line. But because the, um, the observation column that I'm adding in, um, because it's not part of the X or Y default values, we're going to have to add it in this custom data parameter. So this is what we use to pass additional data to the hover template, which isn't part of that X or Y uh, value. So um, you can see I've added in observation and then we just reference the index for it here. So you can see we've got we reference Y for our um, percentage column, but we need to reference the place in the custom data for our observation um, column. This extra here, don't worry about it, it just hides extra info that plot inc includes by default. So it ensures that only the specified hover template content is displayed. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, so now, in my opinion, that looks so much better. You can do loads of different aesthetic things. You could change the color of it. You can, basically you can add in anything that's in your data frame, okay? So anything that pertains to, um, these um these bars um you can add in so it's a really nice neat little function okay um i'm just going to check how we're doing for time Ooh, okay um so once a graph has been created um we can use something called the update layout method um so we can use that on the graph that we've created to modify things such as the titles or the legend details without needing to recreate the figure from scratch. So all I want to do now, I'm thinking this looks pretty good, but I just want to center that uh, title. OK, so I can use update layout. And I use this title underscore X parameter, and I just set that to 0 0.5 just to center it right in the middle. So let's do that. Nice. So we have a finished, very, very simple um, bar chart. So let's move on now to our second um, data set. So this data set classifies individual residents by gender identity and age within England and Wales. I'll just check the chat, just keep my eye on it, see how things are, okay. So I am gonna whiz through a little bit of the sort of reading in, in the data and the data cleaning because I am just conscious of time. And if you do want to, um, you can go back and look through the code comments thoroughly, but we're basically doing the same thing that we did before um, in terms of the cleaning that we're going to be doing. So you can see now, um, we've not just got our age, uh, and sorry, our gender identity categories, we've also got our age. Um, again, we can see some stuff that needs filtering. Um, we've got a does not apply. I uh, need to get that out of the gender identity category again. And we've got this age 15 years and under. We're seeing as this data set only collects information from those age 16 years and older, we're going to want to get rid of that cat category as well. So let's check out the shape. Um, so we're working with 42 rows by seven columns. And like I said, I'm going to whiz through this again because it is just the same stuff that we've done. We're just filtering out an additional um, a, additional um, a value um, in the age category. So the one thing I will show you is, um, so. Basically, because I'm going to be making a grouped bar chart with this data, um, I want to color the bars by age for each gender identity category. Uh, what I do want to do is I'm going to think about how these values are going to be displayed on my legend. Um, so I don't want this age in years. I just want 16-24, and I want that for the ages, um, each age category. 
So what I'm going to do here is I've got my, um, so I'm overwriting my original values in my age column. And I'm using, um, I'm basically chaining together a lot of string replace um, functions. So you can see um, what I'm doing is I'm replacing any string that matches it matches aged with a gap with um, an empty string. I'm going to replace two with a little dash. I'm going to replace years with empty string and so on until we end up this result. So let's check out our unique values. So you can see, nice, neater, and it's going to fit better on a legend, in my opinion. It's just going to look a little bit nicer. So um, just these are just some questions that you could consider if you're we making a group um, bar chart like this. So. We're going to be looking at how is gender identity distributed amongst different age groups. So you could think, for instance, well, what percentage of trans women are aged 16 to 24? Are older age groups overrepresented in the non-response category? These are just a few things that a graph like this could help you answer. So let's go and do a bit of uh, pre-processing. So it's a little bit more complex than um, what we did before, which is just straightforward um, calculating of the percentage. It was um, we didn't really need to do any group by or anything, but what we're going to do now is we are indeed going to get to grips with um, this group by function, because what we want to do is we want to group the data by gender identity and then sum the observations within that category. Then what we'll do is we'll divide those observations in each row by the total observations per gender identity category. And then we'll do the usual multiply by 100 and assign the values to a new column titled percentage. So. Below what we're doing, what, what we're doing here in this row is we're going to create a new series, which is just a data structure for a single column of a data frame. And we're going to um, call this total observation per category. So we're not assigning a new column to our original data frame. We're just creating a series. OK. We're going to use group by, which allows us to group the data frame by a specific column. So in the round brackets, that's what we're grouping by. And then what follows it is the um, column that we're going to perform an aggregate operation on. So we're going to um, form our aggregate operation on um, our observation column. Sorry, I worded that bit weird. But um, yeah, specifically what we're doing is we're summing the observation values within each gender identity category. And then we're going to assign this sum value back to each row in the new series total observation per category. So let's have a look at this. So you can see. Um, we've got this new series of data here. And if I can add in a new, let's see if I can add in a new below. So yeah, um, let's check out our. So basically, what we've done here is we've just summed up the values for this group, summed up the values for the second group um, for our gender identities. That's what that is there. Oh, I actually did include that. Um, OK. so. What we can do now is we can calculate the percentage for each row. So now we are going to add a new column to this um, data frame here. And we are going to take the observation. So each of these observations here. Um, and we're going to divide that by the total observation per category that we just created. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply that by 100. And then here we're going to use this round function as well. So we can round it to two decimal places. Let's check it out, we'll print out the first 10 rows. Nice, we've got our percentages that we need. So now we can create our interactive grouped bar chart. I'm probably not gonna go onto the stack bar chart just because I am conscious of time. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, let's say um, i create this grouped bar chart. So when you're creating a group bar chart, there's a few subtle differences that you'll need to account for in the code. So you'll need to make sure that, of course, this is a grouped bar chart, and you can do that by setting the mode parameter. So you just set it to group. Second, we're going to need a way to color each bar in each group, and we want to do that according to our age categories. So we're going to supply color with our age column. Everything else is uh, pretty much the same. We've done the same things that we did before. We've set the width, the height, the title, the X and the Y. Let's now have a look at our result. So um, the cool thing about um, Plotly's legends is that they're interactive. Um, so when you click on a legend category, it's going to hide all the data that's associated with that category. If you double click on a category in the legend, it's going to only focus on that category. So you can see just focus on the 65 plus age group there. So that's a nice little um, 
feature of um, Plotly. It allows you to e easily explore patterns and trends in your data. Um, as you can see, um, default um, default graphs looking okay, but um, we could probably improve it by um, centering this main title. And also, um, we could just, I'll show you how to move the legend around, because you might think, don't want it there, I want it on the bottom right. Okay. So let's set our title underscore X parameter to 0 0.5 to whack that right in the middle of um, the graph. And you can see we've got our other parameter that we haven't come across in update layout before. And this is um, for our legend. So we supply it uh, with a dictionary and we can change these parameters within the dictionary. So um, you can see we've got V uh, orientation V, which means we're having a vertical orientation and we can supply it with, uh, we're gonna anchor it to the top and we can, we've can we got our specific Y value, specific X value, and we're gonna give it a title age. Um, so all we're doing is we're just capitalizing it, uh, this here because it gives the, it just names that legend what the column um, is. So let's do that. Nice. We've moved it and we've centered our title. So you can run this as well. Um, this, I just did a load of really hideous changes. Um, I just basically put in anything. It does look quite appalling, but basically this is just to show you how many parameters you can mess around with and um, how many things you can change. But I wouldn't suggest that this is a um, particularly good looking graph, but um, yeah, let's. Um, I just thought I'd uh, pop that in there if anyone wants to play around with it. Um, we're not going to do the stack bar chart. Um, please do go for it in your own time, though. It's just that I'm conscious we've got um, about 17 minutes now to get through um, the more intensive, um, harder uh, visualization. So let's go to our third, uh, third um data set. So this data set cl classifies residents by gender identity and ethnic group. The unit of analysis that we're now looking at is the 331 local authorities across England and Wales. So we're getting a bit more granular in terms of our um, geographic um, focus. So you can see I've just printed out, um, let's actually do 10 because that's way too much. Um, so yeah, you can see we've got our code for our um, local authority and um, you've got the name, and we've got our gender identity code and we've got our ethnic group code as well. So again, I am going to whiz through this, um, this cleaning because it's largely the same that we've done before. We're just getting our columns in neater, nicer order. We're removing redundant um, categories. But uh, the one thing that I will uh, mention is that we're only working with three gender identity categories here. OK, so we're not we've not got the more granular categories of like trans man, trans woman, um, all of the gender identities. Um, we're just working with um, sort of main ones, which is uh, gender identity the same as sex registered at birth, gender identity different from sex registered at birth. Okay, um, so what we could do is, um, I'm quite interested in the non-response, let's say. So I am gonna have a think about how does the rate of non-response on gender identity, how does that vary amongst different ethnic groups across local authorities in England and Wales. So you could think of some questions that this could help you answer, such as does the relationship between non-response and ethnic group for local authorities differ between the white categories and other ethnic groups? So that, given that I want to explore this question above, I want to create a scatter plot that explores the relationship between the percentage of certain ethnic groups within local authorities and their non-response rates. Therefore, I'll need to do um, some prepping again. So I need to prep my X and Y variables and I'll need to calculate the percentage of each ethnic group in each local authority and that ethnic group's non-response rate within each local authority. So we'll start first by calculating the percentage of each ethnic group in each local authority. And we're gonna start with this piece of code here. So you can see we're using this group by function again. Um, and I want you to remember that the uh, column that we put in the first set of round brackets, that's the one that we'd like to group together. So in this case, we wanna group our data by each local authority name and each ethnic group within that local authority. And then the column that follows in the square brackets is the one that we want to perform the aggregate operation on. So in this case, we're summing the observation values within each combination of local authority name and ethnic group categories. And then we're assigning this summed value to a new column here. So what we're doing is we're going to reset the index. So we have 
our index in nice, neat sequential order. And for this new data frame we're creating here, the result of this operation is going to be under a column called ethnic sum. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a quick glance at our new data frame. So you can see we've got a brand new uh, shiny column and we have our sums of um, our ethnic groups. So you can see it's set those local authority names now into alphabetical order to. Um, and what we want to do now is calculate the total observations for each local authority. So how many people in total live in each local authority? So we're going to group on local authority name. We're going to perform the aggregate operation on the observation column. We're going to sum those observations. We'll reset our index and we'll create a new data frame called LA underscore totals. And we'll put the results of this um, operation under a column called LA sum. So let's have a look. So you can see, nice, we've got the total number now. So we've got how many um, different ethnic group totals are in each local authority, and we've got the full sum as well. So what we can do now is we can use something called the merge function. So Panda's merge function is used to merge two data frames together, and we can do this based on what columns they have in, co in common. So you can see that both data frames share this uh, local authority name column. So that's going to be why supply to the on parameter, because that's what we're merging on. Um, and it's also important to note that the order that you put um, each data frame in the merge does matter. Um, it's, it can affect which uh, data frames rows are preserved. But it doesn't really matter too much in our case. Um, so let's print that out. So you can see now we've got our two columns side by side in an appropriate place for us to now calculate the first um percentage, which is going to be our group percentage, so the percentage of each ethnic group within each local authority. So um, we're going to create a new column in that merged data frame called group percentage, and we're just going to divide those ethnic sum values by the LA sum values. And there we have it. So you can see, for instance, in this first local authority, um, there's about 2% uh, um, Asian residents, about 90% white, et cetera. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate our ethnic group non-response rates within our local authorities. So luckily for us, we already have our ethnic group totals, which we can reuse. So we're going to reuse this data frame that we created before. Now what we need to do is calculate the sum of the non-responses for each ethnic group within each local authority. So we have this big lengthy piece of co uh, code here, which looks quite intimidating. But all we're doing here is we're subsetting the data first. So remember, we did a bit of this filtering before when we remo removed like does not apply and stuff like that. We're going to make sure that we're only uh, including rows which match this condition. So keep only rows that are equal to not answered in the gender identity um, column. And then we're going to do group, uh, a group by function. So we're going to group uh, by local authority name and ethnic group, and we're going to sum those non-response observations. We're going to reset our index and we're going to create a um, new data frame called non-response totals. And we'll put those results under a column called NR underscore total. So let's check it out. So, yep, you can see we've got our totals here. So you can see that in this uh, first local authority, you know, 61 um, Asian residents didn't respond. Um, 36 black residents didn't respond, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, what we can do is we can do another merge so we can merge the ethnic group totals with the ethnic group non-response totals we're going to merge on uh, two columns here because we've got two columns in common we've got the local authority name and the ethnic group so let's go ahead and do that now we can do our calculations so we'll create a new column called uh, ethnic non-response percentage and we're going to divide that non-response total by the ethnic sum and let's check it out nice um I think I might have done a bit of overkill in terms of how much I'm merging things. So um, maybe I'll tweak this notebook in the future so that maybe it's a, this bit's a little bit more simple. But if you are still following with me, um, now that we've completed the necessary calculations, we've got two data sets. We've got group percentage, which details the percentage of each ethnic group in each local authority. And we've got group non-response, which details the ethnic group non-response percentage in each, other, in each uh, local authority. So all we need to do now then is merge these data sets together so that we can access the new columns. So we want our group percentage column and the ethnic non-response column. So all we've got here is another merge um, command. We're going to name this resulting data frame NR for non-response. What we've got in the square brackets, 
you can do this to detail um, which columns you want to preserve. So you might not want to preserve all the columns in the merge. Um, for instance, local authority sum is redundant. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to choose to merge on these two columns. And in terms of how this is just saying, specifying what type of join to perform. In this case, this is a left join. But don't worry about that too much for now. Um, so nice. Now we've got a finished data set. Um, just check the time. Not too bad. Um, OK, so now we have our x value, which is our group percentage. And we have our y values, which is our ethnic non-response percentage. So we can now make our first interactive scatter plot. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple scatter plot, and I'm going to explore the relationship between the percentage of Asian citizens within local authorities and their non-response rates. So you can see I'm creating a new data frame here called Asian, and I'm going to filter my data set so that I only keep rows in which the ethnic group is Asian, Asian British, British or Asian Welsh. I'll reset the index so it's all in a nice, neat order. Um, and you can see that's worked. So we're just using that head command to just print out the first five rows. Now, to make um, the interactive scatter plot, it's pretty simple. So instead of using a bar method, we use, would you believe it, a scatter method. So you can see it's got the same um, parameters here. Um, and the only difference here is that I add a trend line to it so we can uh, see um, whether we've got like a positive or negative relationship, whatever. Um, so I've set my X and Y axis labels. Um, I don't, um, for instance, want um, you know, labels that have underscores in them. So I'll just uh, make sure that they're more um, intelligible and easy to understand. I'll set my width from the height. And I'm going to update my traces. So I'm going to do this all in one go. So I've added some more custom data here. This can help if you've got outliers in your graph. You might want to add some more custom data that might shed a bit of light on them. So I've added in um, the non-response total and the ethnic sum. Um, as well, and you can see I've added in local authority name because that's going to be really helpful if we've got 331 local authorities. You want to be able to easily scroll over them like so and see um, the name of that um, local authority. So um, this is why tooltips can be helpful. So you can see here we've got a really kind of extreme outlier, right? Um, which makes sense when we include this additional information from our data frame. So um, we've got the Isles of Scilly here, and we can see that, um, that there's only six uh, Asian residents there, and four of them have not responded to this question, which is why we've got such an um, inflated non-response rate for this um, for this um, local authority. So that's why um, tooltips can come in handy. You can scroll over, you see lots of uh, information. Uh, I formatted this so that the local authority name was in bold. But in hindsight, I would have done it so that the actual name, not just the title of the column, was um, in bold. But yeah, that's um, that's how we create our interactive scatter plot. But what I'm going to do now in the last sort of six minutes, I'll just check the chat. Okay. Um, what we're going to do in the last six minutes is we're going to use Plotly's updates menu in conjunction with the update method to create a drop down where we can switch between the Asian ethnic group, and I'm going to filter my data set so that we have a, another data frame, which is the white ethnic group, just um, so we can have some comparisons. So you could think you could do this if you've got some um, categorical, um, you've got some categories um, in your data frame. It might be nice to have a drop down for each one. So you can think if you're presenting this, um, you know, a, a conference or something, or, you know, you just want it um, online somewhere, you can switch between um, different sets of data points, which is, you know, it's quite nice. It allows for easy comparison. Um, so let's see how we, we can do this. So first step is to um, initialize your blank figure and add traces, which sounds a bit different from what we've done before. So before we use Plotly Express, you can see we're now using uh, Go, which stands for graph objects. Um, we're using this here because graph objects offers more control over how plots are constructed. What it allows us to do is add um, things called traces, which refer to a set of data. So in our example, we want to add a trace with data points relating to our Asian ethnic group and another one for our white ethnic group. And this will start to make sense when we look at the code below. So what we do is we initialize a figure. So we just use, um, we just call this figure function here. 
And then if we pull show, what we can see is that we've got this kind of like building block here, right? So this is what we're going to plot our points onto. First thing that we need to do is we need to create another data frame, right? So that we have the responses only from um, the uh, white, English, Welsh, Scottish, Northern Irish or British um, ethnic category. So we'll do that here. We'll subset our non-response data frame and we'll filter only so that we have those white responses. So now we've got two data sets. We've got this Asian one and this white one. What we need to do now, so we've got our blank figure. What we're doing is we're using this add trace uh, command and within that, um, we set it to um, scatter and we supply our specific x-axis uh, values. So um, in this case, we're calling on that group percentage column and our y-axis values. We set the mode. So we want um, marker points for our uh, data points. We don't want lines, which is the default. So make sure um, when you're doing this, if you want um, markers, you set it to um, markers. And for the marker as well, you can set um, the size of it. So you use a, uh, the dictionary command here and use this size parameter. I've just set it to 10, but obviously you can set it how, however you want. We've got this visible parameter. What this does is it just sets um, the Asian ethnic group graph to be the default, okay? So we're gonna change between that and the white ethnic data, okay, with our drop down. So it just makes sure it just makes sure that that's the default data that's displayed. And you've got your um, hover template and custom data for that. Now we do the same thing um, for the white ethnic group. So we add a trace for that as well. The only thing that's different here is that we set the visible parameter to false because we want to hide this ethnic group by default because we want to use that drop down to switch between them. OK. And um, so now we've got probably the most important bit. And this is um, the drop down button for our interactivity. So what we can do is we can use the update layout method and we've got this update menus here. This parameter um, inside it is a dictionary, which has um, your buttons. So we have a list of dictionaries called um, buttons and each dictionary um, within that represents a button. So you can see we've got, I know it's an, quite confusing. It's like dictionaries inside of dictionaries. It does get a bit, you know, um, a bit confusing, but um, so we've got our first um, dictionary. That's this one here. That's for our um, first button, which is gonna be um, displayed. And that's gonna be the one that says Asian. And the method that we're going to use, so it specifies what action is going to be performed when that button's going to be clicked. So the method that's going to be performed is update, because we're going to update the graph um, with the following arguments. So the arguments that we have here are the changes, which determine which traces are visible. So when you click that Asian button, it's going to set um, the first trace, which is our um, Asian data frame. It's going to set that to true. And it's get, they're going to set the second um, trace, which is our white um, data frame. It's going to set that to false. Now we've got our second button, and that's just it's just got the inverse there. So when you click that white button, it'll set the Asian data frame to false, and it'll set the white one to true. Then we come out of this um, um, buttons parameter here, and we've got another parameter called direction. It just specifies which direction the menu opens in. So we're going to open that. Um, so it opens down and show active set to true. It just highlights the button that's currently active. So that's the really hard, I suppose, um, part of it done. The rest of it now is just the update um, to our layout, which is just, you know, we're centering our title. We're setting our X axis and Y axis title and we're setting the width and height. So let's go ahead and do this. So now you can see you see our marker points are a little bit bigger than they were before, right? That's just because I changed them to size 10. And we have this nice nifty little button. So you can use this to change between your different data points. Obviously, you can, um, um, you know, go further than this. You could have all of the different ethnic group categories here. You could make sure that each um, of your, you know, different ethnic categories are, have a different color. And so they're more easy to distinguish. But yeah, that's um, 
that's how we do that. Um, the last thing I want to finish on, because I'm going to just check. Um, so I've got about nine minutes for the questions, but I'll just um, I'll just quickly go over this. So a lot of you um, will maybe be wondering, well, how do I share these online? Because what's the point having interactive graphs if they can't be shared um, online? Um, so there is a first really simple way to share and host your Plotly graphs. Um, you can use Plotly's Chart Studio. I've got a little link to it here. It allows you to upload your visualizations directly from your coding environment. Then you can get a link to share them online. You do need to sign up for an account, but it is free. Um, unless you want to share the link privately, then you'll need to upgrade your account. Um, otherwise, for data that's fine, that's been out in the open, uh, that's a good option. But you can also, a uh, more interesting option, in my opinion, is embed your graphs in GitHub, GitHub pages. You can just kind of like host them on your own website. Um, I won't go into this fully, but do check out this link if you want a nice tutorial. Um, that's what I actually use to create a GitHub pages for our UKDS um, GitHub which now acts as a little website where we can show off uh, cool projects like this one. So you can see if you're on the repository um, for this workshop, you can click on this link. Um, I don't know why that was taking so long to work. And you can see I've just used this to create a little um, sort of web page for this workshop. Um, it is unfortunately taking a little while to load. Um, it does have a bunch of visualizations on here, which is probably why. Um, and it has like the interactive map that you can make in the other notebook is along the bottom. But uh, maybe try and load that in your own time because it's not really um, working for me right now. Um, anyway, so that's me. Um, that's me done with this um, sort of like the content of the workshop. What I'll do now is I'm going to check out, see if you guys have any uh, questions for me. Um, yeah, um, let's. Okay, um, we are now on um, 11 o'clock, so I'll get started because we only have about 50 minutes to go through this content. Sorry about this little uh, broken image here. It should be displaying the nice UKDS uh, banner, but um, I put the wrong file pathway there for it. So, what can we do? Um, okay, so. In this guide, you're going to be shown how to make two key types of interactive visualizations. And uh, these include a very basic bar chart, um, and then we'll do a grouped bar chart. And we're going to have a look at a scatter plot, a simple one, and then we'll add a drop down menu to a scatter plot as well. And to create these visualizations, we're going to be using the plotly package. Um, let's just check the chat. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, the data sets that we're going to be using in this workshop, they're from the most recent um, census, and they involve the new voluntary question, which focused on gender identity. So in particular, we're going to explore, you know, the percentages of these different um, gender identity groups um, across England and Wales. We're also going to look at the relationship between age and gender identity, as well as ethnicity and gender identity. But please do note that um, last month on the uh, 12th, the Office for Statistics Regulation confirmed that the gender identity estimates from uh, the 2021 census for England and Wales, they're no longer uh, accredited official statistics, okay? So they've been downgraded now to official statistics in development. So just have that in mind when we're creating, you know, these visualizations and um, some of the numbers, um, you know, might not be entirely accurate at the minute. Um, but if you do want some more information on that, you can go and visit this link at the ONS and um, it'll tell you a bit more about it. But for our purposes, um, you know, we just want to learn how to create some nice interactive form of visualizations. The data sets, um, you know, actually not too important. Just here to show you how to make some uh, cool interactive stuff. Um, so um, what we'll do is we'll get started by importing um, the necessary packages. But if you are following along with, um, sorry, if you are in using your own computational environment, so you've cloned the GitHub, um, you know, and you're not using this interactive notebook here, please do make sure you do the necessary um, installations of these packages. So make sure that you um, run this cell. Um, but for those of us that are following along in Binder's interactive notebook, you don't need to do that. Um, what we're going to do is load in the packages. So. We have a few packages here. We've got read R, 
that's going to allow us to read in our data set, which is a CSV file. We've got this, I want to say Diplo. Um, so that's a library um, for data ma manipulation. And we've got string R, which is for some regular expression operations. And of course, we've got our interactive visualization um, library, Plotly. So the first data set that we're going to be focusing on is a super simple data set, which shows the total counts for our eight gender identities across England and Wales. We'll do a little bit of data cleaning. We'll remove some unnecessary categories um, and we'll clean our column names a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll calculate the percentage of each gender identity category. Then what we'll do is we'll create a very simple interactive bar chart, which is going to display those percentages. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to use this read underscore CSV function and we want to supply it um, with our file pathway. So just where our file lives within our system. So you can see I'm in for in a CSV file and I'm using this assignment operator here to assign the results of this to um, a variable called DF um, for data frame. Um, oh, okay. Make sure you do actually run this um, uh, import cell, not like I did. Uh, okay, so you can see that we have a little bit of information here provided. So you can see that we've got um, three character columns. That's what this CHR stands for. And this just represents text data, okay? And we've also got um, two uh, DBL columns, and that stands for double, and that refers to double precision floating point numbers. So it just basically represents numerical data, okay? So that gives us a little bit of info about it. But we can also use this head command and if we supply it with our data frame and we specify a number of rows to print out, it will um, give you a glimpse of the data. So you can see I've uh, printed out the first uh, 10 rows, but I think its default behavior is just to print out the first five rows. So you can see um, that already there's gonna be a bit of cleaning that needs to be done. So we've got this does not apply category, um, which has zero counts and Obviously, because it does not apply, we don't want it to be shown in our interactive visualization. So we're going to want to filter that out. You can see as well, we've got quite lengthy um, column titles. I probably want to remove uh, these brackets. and I want to um, get rid of this white space. So um, the first thing that we're going to do in our data cleaning process um, is we're going to clean our column names. So you can see here, um, I have this string replace all. Uh, method. What I do is I supply the column names of my data frame and this method finds all the substrings, so all that textual data which matches this regular expression. Um, regular expressions can be a bit um, intimidating to especially to look at, it's a bit um, whoa what's going on there, but all this, um, this regular expression pattern, it just picks up any um, instance of brackets within our strings, our text um, in the column titles, and it just matches that. So it picks it up. And then we do this replacement where anytime we find an instance of uh, brackets with text in it, we just replace it with an empty string, okay? The next thing that we're gonna do, so what we do then is we use the assignment operator and we basically overwrite the original column names, okay? And we do that a couple of other times with some other commands. So we're going to use to lower. What this command does is it just lower cases our title and um, our column names. And we're going to use string replace all to replace any instance of white space with an underscore. So what we can do now is we can run this cell. And as you can see, we've appropriately cleaned our columns, our column titles. So we've already come across this assignment operator. Um, which is used to assign a value. So we've got a little example there. Um, but we're now going to encounter something called um, a pipe operator, which is represented by this little percentage symbol and another percentage uh, symbol here. So um, this can seem as well a little bit intimidating at first, but it is actually pretty simple. So what this does is it just um, it passes the result of one function directly into the next function. So for this um, piece of code here that we see, 
what's happening is um, that we start with our data frame and we just pass it to the filter function. So this is basically equivalent to us just doing this. Okay, but the piping operator is good to get used to because when you're um, doing sort of a, quite a few functions in a row, you can use the pipe operator to pass the results of functions. So it's good to get used to it, but that's all it's doing. It's just saying, please supply this um, filter variable with our data frame. Okay, and you can see here that we have equal operator not equals to within a filter function. So what this is doing is it's specifying that we should only keep rows where this condition is met. So only keep rows in which the gender identity code is not equal to minus eight, because minus eight is our does not apply category. Then what we can do is we can use unique. Um, what this function does is it, um, you can supply it with a column name and it'll output all of its unique values. So it's a good way to check if your filtering has worked. You might be confused by this little dollar sign operator. That's just used to access elements such as columns of a data frame in R. So we use it here to access our gender identity code column because we want to view those unique values. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see that we've successfully got rid of that minus eight value. And if we also use the unique function on our gender identity column, you can see that does not apply has been successfully filtered out. When we're making interactive visualizations or any in, any visualizations for that matter, it's good to think about how our data is going to be displayed. OK, so for me, when I was having a look at these values, in my opinion, they were far too lengthy to go on my X axis because I want my gender identities on the X axis and I want my percentages of gender identities on the Y axis. So, yeah, it's possible that I could do some excessive formatting to sort of like bunch these um, onto one sort of like tick on the x-axis, but I'm going to make things easier for myself. And I'm actually going to change um, the values of these two categories. So what I can do is I can use this mutate function, which allows me to um, change, um, it allows you to change um, some values in your column. So what I do an operator, so I'm passing this data frame to this mutate uh, function. I'm supplying it with um, the relevant column. And what I'm doing is I'm using this uh, recode function, and I'm basically, you, I'm basically invoking the old um, category, which is this first one here, and I'm replacing it with uh, cisgender, just because it's a much shorter word and it'll appear nicer on our x-axis. And for this second really lengthy mouthful here, gender identity different from sex registered at birth, but no specific identity given. We're just going to change that to gender identity different from sex. On the census, um, you basically have a question saying, um, is your gen gender identity the same as sex registered at birth? If you uh, tick yes, then, you know, there's that's it. That's you done with the question. But if you tick no, there's an option for you to write in your gender identity. So this particular category is just for those that chose not to write in anything at all. All that default does here is it just ensures that any value that's not these two values here, so these first two here, it just ensures that they're kept to their default because we don't want to change that. So let's see if it works. So we'll do that unique function again and we'll um, access our gender identity column. So yeah, you can see that those two values have been successfully changed. Now, another thing that we need to do is um, convert our gender identity column to a factor. So you could see when we read in um, our data frame at first, you can see that we have three character columns and two of these double uh, columns, which re represent our numerical data. Well, what we want to do is we want to change this um, gender identity um, category column to a factor. The reason we do this um, is basically to uh, plot this data in alpha and it not in um sorry alphabetical order we want to plot plot it in the order that it appears in the data set because otherwise what plotly does um in r is it um it presents um the data in alphabetical order so it put these categories along the bar um the x-axis in alphabetical order i don't want to do that so that's why i'm um 
overwriting, you can see here the um, gender identity column, and I'm changing it to a factor, okay? And then I use uh, this levels parameter here to specify the order of these categories. So I'm preserving them in the same order that they appear in the data frame. So let's go ahead and do that. And now what we can do is we can use this class function and we can supply it with our gender identity uh, column. And you can see that it's been successfully been changed to a factor. So it's changed from a character uh, data type to a factor. What we need to do now before we can plot our data is we need to calculate the percentage of each gender identity category. So you can see we've got this mutate function, which we use to change um, columns. And we're adding a new column titled percentage to our original data frame. So we pass the data frame to this function, mutate, and we've got our new column here, percentage. And then what we're going to do is we're basically going to perform this calculation. OK, so we're going to take every observation here, and we're going to divide it by the sum of those observations, and that's going to give us our percentages. We'll do the usual of um, multiplying by 100, and we're also going to use this round function here, which will uh, see we wrap that calculation in this round function, and we're going to round it to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's see if it works. So, yep, you can use um, what I've done here is I've just basically used head which um, we used before to get us a brief glimpse of the data set. I'm just using it on a specific column here. So it's just printing out the first um, five values there. Now we can basically create our first super simple interactive visualization. So to do this, uh, we're using Plotly's Plotly function. And what we're going to do is we're going to supply these parameters here. So these are the variables um, of this function. We're going to supply it with the necessary arguments. So that's the data um, that we pass to the um, parameters or the values that we pass to the parameters. So you can see um, it's asking here for the data, and I'm going to supply it with my data frame variable. It asks for an x, uh, an x value and our y values. And what you can see is that we've got our um, column here for gender identity. We just proceed it with a tilde, and that's this uh, symbol here. This just tells R to look for that variable within the data frame. We've got our type parameter, which we're going to set to bar. And we've got our marker parameter. This just defines how the bars should be styled. So we've got a list here, and we supply it with a particular RGB value, which is going to become the color of our bar. And then we do the same for the line that surrounds um, the bar. So it's a little border there. And we can set the width of the bars here too. Then what we're going to do is set the width and the height of the graph. So we'll run this. Then um, if we just run um, the figure, it'll show it. Don't worry about this warning message here. So this is the default. Now, obviously, it's not looking great, OK? We've got this very uh, dominant uh, value here which obviously obscures the results um, and interesting insights from our other gender identity categories. So what we can do is we can use something called um, the layout method. And we can use this layout method to customize the appearance and the layout of a graph that's already been created. So this allows you to modify things such as titles, legend details, axis properties, without needing to create the figure from scratch. What it also allows us to do here is scale our y-axis value. So I'm going to take the log of these um, y values so that we can actually pull out some um, insights and um, sort of analyze the other uh, categories in this gender identity column. So you can see um, we are using this layout function. We're going to supply it with the original um, title of our graph, which um, standard convention in coding is to call your graphs fig, just like standard convention um, is to call a data set that you're working with DF, um, which stands for data frame. Um, but that probably is more of a Python convention that I've carried over to R. Um, we'll set our title. So we've got the percentage of each gender identity in England and Wales. We've got our x-axis, which we're going to give it a title 
and we're going to set the show show line to true. If we don't do that, it removes this um, line at the bottom. So, you know, we don't want to do that. And you can see for our y-axis, we're going to set the type to log. So let's go ahead and do that. Let, let's run this again. And you can see now we've got um, this nice um, log scale here. So that allows us to better visualize the other um, categories in this uh, gender identity column. So you can see um, the, we've got this um, toolbar at the top, which allows us to zoom in, zoom around, reset our axis, um, all of that good stuff. You can download the plot as well. But um, I want to draw your attention to this interactive element. So you can see that when I hover over each bar, I'm getting this little rectangular box, which is providing information on the X and Y values. So when you're using different R, R libraries that are geared towards interactive visualization, you'll often come across these and they're called tooltips generally. They're the small boxes that provide that info. So for instance, if you hover over maybe a point in a scatter plot, a bar in a bar chart, or a segment in a pie chart, they're going to display um, that X and Y value. But um, you're probably going to want to leverage that feature for some more interesting information than just your x-axis value and your y-axis value. So let's say, for instance, that um, I'd like to add in data from the observation column, not just these default x and y uh, values. Maybe I want to show, you know, the, let's go back to our um, data frame. Maybe I want to show the raw counts of each number within um, the different gender identity categories. So let's have a look at how we do that. So to do that, it is quite easy. What we do is we um, use the text and hover info parameter. So unfortunately, um, we do have to create um, the graph again because in the original graph, we didn't specify anything in our hover text or hover info parameters. And that's just because I wanted to show you the default behavior of these tooltips and what they show. So you can see I've got my hover text parameter. And in that, what I'm doing is I'm basically using a little bit of uh, HTML. So you can see we've got these um, this BR here, which stands for line break. So it just puts, um, so you can see how now the X and Y uh, variables in this tooltip are on one row. This just splits it so that it's um, on two rows. And you can see that I've got my um, percentage symbol in there that because that's how I'd like it to be displayed. I'm supplying it with um, the percentage column and I've got my observation column here as well. All this paste does here is it's just used to combine multiple pieces of text and data into one string. So we're formatting this as one string and we're adding in these line breaks. Then I just um, set my hover info to text, which tells Plotly to only display the text that's provided in that hover text that we just defined there. So we're going to create this new figure, and I'm going to do the same thing I did again for um, the y-axis, which is where I take the log. And I'm going to set my title and my x-axis and y-axis title. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so you can see when we hover over this now, we have um, our, we've removed our gender identity um, information because we've got that really neatly displayed on our x-axis. What I've done is I've kept in our y value because, because we, we've got this um, log scale, it can be a little bit difficult to pull out the exact percentage. So I've kept them there and I've added in that percentage symbol. I've got it on nice new lines um, and I've added in the observation number as well. You can do more, so you can, um, for instance, you might want um, these percentage, the percentage to show up in bold as well. So you could add like a little um, bold, um, you could add a couple of bold tags on there if you have a look at some HTML elements. But for now, I'm quite satisfied with how this graph is showing up. So what we'll do now is we're gonna move on to the next um, visualization. Just checking the chat, seeing we're all good. OK, so let's move on to our second data set. So this data set classifies residents by gender identity and age. That shouldn't say the unit of analysis um, is England and Wales. Um, that's the um, 
geography we're looking at, but it's not the unit of analysis. So sorry about that. I will go and correct that after. Um, but we're going to do the usual um, stuff that we did last time. So I am going to whiz through this bit a little because we're doing the same sort of cleaning operations. I have tried to include loads of code comments and loads of um, explanations. So if you do want to go back and have a look at this notebook in your own time, you can then um, go through these again. But we'll just kind of whiz through that. So we've got um, a new data frame here that you can see. I'm just printing out the first 10 rows. You can see we've got um, our gender identity categories again, and we've got some age categories here. Now, again, we can see some stuff that probably needs removing. We've got a does not apply category that needs removing. But because this data set only collects uh, information on those age 16 and over, we're also going to remove this age category here because it's going to have nothing um, on the bars. So let's check out the dimensions. So we're working with 42 rows this time by seven columns, and we can see that the columns are going to need cleaning again as well. So I will just whiz through this because it is what we did before. We're removing those brackets. We're lowercase and we're getting rid of that white space. I'm filtering out the um, age category that I don't want. But I will draw your attention to this here. So basically, because I'm going to be, um, I want my um, bars to be um, colored by this age category, they're going to be displayed on a um, legend next to the graph. I'm going to have um, each group of uh, bars is going to be for our different gender identities. So um, because of that, I'm going to think about how I want that information to appear on my legend. Well, I don't really want this aged here, and I don't want years there. And I'd just like, to be honest, to have 16-24, 25-34 for my different age categories, and then just 65 plus. So what we can do is um, we can use multiple string replace calls together. So we're calling on this function multiple times. And what we're doing is we're applying multiple string replacements in succession. So what we'll do is we'll, anytime we come across aged, which has a space next to it, we'll replace it with an empty string. Anytime we come across two, we'll replace it with this little dash. Years, we'll replace with an empty space and et cetera. And then what we'll do is we'll overwrite um, the initial values in our age column. Then what we can do, is we can um, pass our data frame to the select function where we can specify the uh, column that we're interested in. And then we'll just pipe that output to the head function. So that's just another way of um, showing these results. So you can see now I have a nice neat age column. And when I create my legend for this graph, it's gonna show up with these values and not um, the more sort of lengthier um, titles there. Again, I'm going to use um, that combo of mutate and recode to replace those rather lengthy um, values in my gender identity um, categories column. I'll check that it's changed yet. And I'm going to change this uh, gender identity column to a factor again so that everything shows in the right order. So now for this um, visualization, we're going to look at how gender identity is distributed amongst different age groups. And I've included a few sub questions that you could um, that could help you answer, it's just a few examples. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to pre-process our data. So um, below, what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a new function. So that's our group by function. And this is going to allow us to group the data by gender identity. Then what we're going to do is we'll pipe this to our mutate function. And this adds a new column. So we're adding our, uh, a column called percentage. And what we're going to do is basically, um, for each of these uh, groups of um, our different gender identities, we're going to divide the observation by the sum of observations, multiply by 100, and then use this round function to round it up to two decimal places. This ungroup function here is just um, standard to use um, after you've used group by. So make sure it's followed by ungroup when you're done with the grouping operation. And then what we should have is a new column called percentage. And yep, it has the percentages for each of our age categories within each gender identity. 
So now that allows us to create our grouped um, bar chart. Okay, so when creating group bar charts, there is a few, um, well, there's only really a tiny difference that you need to account for in the code. So we'll need a way to color each bar in each group according to the age categories. And you can see here, we've got this nice color parameter. All you need to do is supply it with the um, column that you want to color your bars by, which in, in my case is age. And we also have this colors parameter. Now, all this does here is it um, selects um, a palette, so a color palette to use, and it tells um, our how many colors are going to be re re required. Sorry. So you can see here, what I've done is I've uh, got my unique function for um, my age um, column. And I just want to know, all length does is it tells you um, basically how many elements are in this un in this um, age column, how many unique elements. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, right? We've got our five unique elements. All that's saying is that we're going to need five colors. Okay, we need five distinct colors in each group. That's all that does. We've got our hover info again, which is going to be text. And we've got uh, some, um, some more uh, information here, sorry. So we've got our observation. Um, I did think I actually decided to get rid of that, sorry. So let's, um, if you're following along, just go ahead and get rid of that. So we're going to show our uh, percentage. Um, we're going to set it to uh, two decimal places, and we're going to make sure that we have this little percentage symbol after it. And we're going to put in the column that we're going to show, which is percentage. And then we're also going to show the age group. Okay, so all I've done there is just put them onto separate lines so they're a bit easier to see. We've got our marker again. So basically, we're... Um, setting the uh, color that surrounds the bars so just the border of them um, the bars and we're setting the bar width as well and we've got the width and height of the um, plot itself let's go ahead and run this it's taking a little minute um okay here we go So you can see we've got our tooltips um, for each different age group. Now, a nice thing about Plotly is its um, legends are interactive by default. So what we can do is um, if you click on a certain uh, age group, it's going to hide that um, those data uh, that data point from the graph. If you double click on a category in the legend, it's just going to isolate that one. So let's try it with this one. I have this sometimes where it kind of like doesn't really work how it's supposed to. The logic is that there you go. So it is a little bit clunky sometimes, but if you double click, you're supposed to be able to isolate. There we go. Um, just one um, category in the legend, but it doesn't always work um, so smoothly. But yeah, that's how we use our interactive legends. Um, what we're going to do now is I'll just show you um, basically uh, how you can add a nice little title to this. So you can see at the minute it's just um, there's no title for our legend. So we're going to use that layout function again where we can like sort of like make some nice aesthetic changes. Um, and Sorry, I just thought, um, I thought there was something in the chat, which there was, but it's just Emma saying if you've got any... Any stuff for the Q&A, please do put it in and I'll get around to it at the um, end of the session. Any sort of questions you have about the content. Um, so you can see for our legend, we supply it with a list. And then we uh, supply this title parameter with another list. Um, and we supply that with the text that we'd like for the legend. So in my case, I'm, I just call it age group. So let's go ahead and do that. Nice. We have a nice little finished grouped bar chart. 
So I will show you quickly how to do this. So the method um, below, what it does is it simply converts the previously made grouped bar chart, so this figure two, it just converts it into a stacked bar chart. So you can do that using the layout um, method. I'm giving it a new name because I'm making it um, a new variable. So you can see I supply it with um, the relevant plot. And all I do is I set the bar mode, this parameter here, to stack. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to call um, the finished result st underscore fig. So you can run this cell. And now you have a nice stacked bar chart. So that's quite um, an easy little shift you can do there. You can play around with the legends still. Um, uh, but yeah, what we'll do now is we'll move on just because we have, we're not, we are a little bit pressed for time. So we've got about 17 minutes to get through this um, third data set. Um, so I'll try and cover everything that we need to. So. This data set classifies residents by gender identity and ethnic group. And the unit of analysis this time is going to be 331 local authorities across England and Wales. So we're getting a bit more granular now with our um, geography that we're looking at. It's a little bit more interesting. So um, you can see we've got four character columns, three um, sort of numerical uh, cor columns. Now let's just have a brief look at the first 10 rows. So you can see... We've got our gender identity category. So you can see we're only dealing with four categories here. And once we move this does not apply, we'll only be dealing with three. Um, the columns that were the values that we'll be dealing with is gender identity the same as sex registered at birth, gender identity different than sex registered at birth, but no specific identity given. Or I think it might just be, I can check those uh, values. And then it's just um, the non-response um, category. So those that chose not to respond to this question which is what we're going, to, going to be focusing on in particular. And now we've got our eight um, ethnic group categories too. Um, seven, once we get rid of this, does not apply here. So let's do a bit of uh, data cleaning. Um, so below, I've got a different method that can be used instead of the string replace all method, which I demonstrated in previous uh, sections. So what this does is it basically looks for a pattern. So this is... Um, can be a little bit intimidating, but it's just a regular expression. And it basically matches any instance of brackets. Okay, so that's all this is doing. It's just looking at strings and it's just picking up those brackets, anything within those brackets, including those back brackets themselves. And it applies a replacement. So it just um, substitutes that with an empty string. And then um, this little dot with the X here, it represents each column name that this g sub function here will be applied to. So that's just a different way of, of um, getting rid of those brackets. But don't worry if you do think it's a little bit confusing and you can go back and play around with it. Um, let's just go and run through these. So we'll lowercase in it, we're shortening some of the names, and we're left with these columns. We're also going to filter out the does not apply from both the um, ethnic group um, code and the gender identity category. Um, I'll just see if this lets me insert cell below. No, it doesn't seem to um, want to do that. But what I will do is I'll just um, show what gender identity categories we're dealing with. Let's run this. So you can see. Um, we are dealing with, um, oh, it's wrong data frame, so sorry. Um, we're only dealing with three categories this time, okay? So we've just got gender identity the same as the same as sex registered at birth, gender identity different from sex registered at birth, and not answered, okay? So the question that I'd like to focus on is, how does the rate of non-response on gender identity vary amongst different ethnic groups across local authorities in England and Wales? So you could think of some questions that this could help you answer. So does the relationship between non-response and ethnic group percentage for local authorities differ between the white ethnic group um, and other ethnic groups? So given that I want to explore the main question above, um, I'd like to create a scatter plot um, which explores that relationship between percentage of um, certain ethnic groups within local authorities and their specific non-response rates. So what I'm going to need to do is prep my X and Y variables 
So what I'm going to need to do is calculate the percentage of each ethnic group in each local authority and that particular ethnic group's non-response rate within each local authority. So let's um, start by um, calculating this percentage of each ethnic group in each local authority. So what we're going to do is we're going to pipe this um, third data set that we're working with to our group by function. And we're going to group our data by local authority name and ethnic group. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this summarize function here and sum our observations for this group data. And we're going to create a, a new column in our new data frame that we're creating called ethnic sum, which sums this observation. All this does here is it just removes um, any um, values that are NA, but we don't need to worry about that too much. And remember, obviously, once you've done a group by operation, remember to ungroup as well. What we can do now is we can print the first few rows of this data frame to check. So we should have this um, outcome here, which is our new um, column name, which is the result of this um, group by and this aggregate sum that we did on our observation column. Nice. So you can see that we've got our local authority name. It's now ordered them um, alphabetically, which um, is fine for our purposes. And we've got the sum of each ethnic group within each local authority. Uh, OK, so uh, remember as well that this is just showing the first um, five rows. So we do indeed have um, this for all of our um, 331 local authorities. Next thing that we want to do is calculate the total observations for each local authority. And we, we do this by grouping our um, data frame by local authority. So we group by local authority name. And all we do is we use the summarize function and we basically want to create a new column in a new data frame called local authority sum, LA underscore sum. And we just sum up those observations. So we just want the total amount of people in each of our local authorities. Then we ungroup and let's print the first few rows to check. So you can see now we have the total number of residents for our first local authority, for our second and so on, for all 331 local authorities. So what we're going to do now is we've got these two data frames we've created, right? And we've got a, a column in common, which is our local authority name. So let's perform a merge. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this merge function here, and we're going to merge the ethnic totals data frame with the LA total data, totals data frame together. And this by parameter here, it just specifies which column to merge on. So I mentioned that we have these um, columns in common the local authority name. So let's go ahead and merge on that. Then what we want to do is we can, um, now that we have this new data frame, I'm going to try adding in, it doesn't let me add in a cell, which is a little bit annoying, um, but I will show you the results of it after. So what we want to do is we want, in this new data frame called group percentage, we're going to calculate the percentage of each ethnic group within each local authority because that's um our that's our first x um variable prep then. So we're going to use this mutate function again to create a new column that we're going to call percentage, and all we're going to do is we're going to take that um uh, this ethnic sum here, and we're going to just going to divide it by the um sum of people in that particular local authority then we'll um, round that to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see um, all we've done is we've taken this value here, divided it by this value for each row, and there's our percentage, there's our group percentage. So now that we've got our group percentages, what we want to do is we want to calculate the ethnic group non-response rates within each local authority. So luckily for us, we already have our ethnic group totals. So let's check them out. Um, so we can reuse this column here. So you can see when you just print out, um, when you just run the data frame, it's going to show you um, a lot more than you get with just um, using that head command. But obviously, it doesn't show all. You can see here we've got these little three dots um, to indicate that it's not showing everything. Anyway. So um, 
what we want to do is we want to calculate the sum of non-responses for each ethnic group within each local authority. So we're going to create a new data frame, which we're going to call non-response totals. We're going to pipe this uh, third data set to our filter function. And we're going to specify that we're going to um, only keep the rows in which our gender identity is equal to not answered. OK, then what we want to do is group um, the results by local authority name and ethnic group. Then we use the summarize function to sum up those observations and we're going to store them in a new column that we're calling non-response total. And then, of course, we remember to ungroup at the end. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see now we have our total um, non-response for each ethnic group within each um, local authority. So you can see for our first local authority, we've got 61 Asian um, res residents didn't respond to the question, 36 black um, residents didn't respond, 46 mixed, 29 other, and so on and so on. What we can do now that we have um, this um, non-response total is we're going to merge um, the ethnic group totals with the ethnic group non-response totals. Um, I probably did go a bit too crazy with all of the mergers that I'm doing here. I might revisit this notebook and maybe make this section a little bit simpler if I can, because I just feel like there's maybe too many mergers going on. Um, so I'll have to maybe review that. So we've got our merge command here. We've got our ethnic group totals and our non-response totals, those two data frames. And we're going to use this um, by parameter to merge on our local authority name and our ethnic group because we have them both in columns. So we've got the local authority name here and the ethnic group here. And we've got um, the same up here. OK, so we can merge these together. And um, this uh, parameter here, all.x, all it's doing here is performing a left join. So you can do left joins, right joins, etc. Don't worry about that too much now. It's not important for us to go into, but um, just keep in mind that there's different types of joins that you can do and it affects which data is preserved. So now we've got our result, which is a group, uh, a data frame called group non-response. And you can see I have the necessary columns now to do my final calculation to make my y uh, variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, divide those non-response totals by the ethnic sum totals. And I'm going to create a new column within this um, group non-response data frame called ethnic non-response percentage. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's take a quick glance at it. And now we do see we have our ethnic non-response percentages. So we've got two data frames now, don't we? We have the one that we first created, which is our group percentage with our group percentages in the percentage column. And you can see that we have this group non-response uh, data frame with our ethnic non-response percentages. So we're going to do our last merge. Um, no more mergers after this. Um, so what we can do now is merge those two um, data frames together. And you can see that um, what I'm doing here is I'm merging the non-response data with the percentage of each ethnic group within each um, local authority. And I'm using select here with um, the second data frame to isolate the columns that I want to preserve in the merge. So I don't want local authority sum. I don't think that's important. And I don't want it on my tooltip. So I'm not going to include that in the merge. So that's what that's what you can do here. here. If you don't want to preserve um, certain columns, then make sure you specify the ones to keep. And I'm going to merge on local authority name and ethnic group because we have those in common in our two data frames. So let's check, uh, check out our final finished data frame, which I've just called NR for non-response. You can see we've got our um, Y value here, which is our ethnic non-response uh, percentage and our percentage, which is our uh, group percentage. Um, OK. So what we're going to do now in this section is we're going to create a very simple scatter plot which explores the relationship between our percentage of Asian citizens within local authorities and their non-response rates. So um, you can see here that all I'm doing is subsetting the data frame. So I'm filtering it by um, my ethnic group column and I'm only keeping the rows in which my ethnic group is Asian, Asian British or Asian Welsh, which is this first category here. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to call the results of that um, data frame Asian 
because it represents our ethnic group in question. So let's check it out. You can see that we've done the filtering successfully and we're just left with those results for our um, Asian citizens. So what we can do now is we can plot our first scatter plot. So you can see here we're using this plotly function again. And we're supplying it with our data frame in question, which is um, Asian. We've got our X variable and our Y variable. We're setting what's going to come up on our tooltip. So I think it'd be quite interesting to show the non-response total for each uh, local authority and the sum of that ethnic group. And I'm going to set that hover info to text because I'm showing I want this all to be text. And the um, important thing, of course, is to set the type to scatter. So you use this type parameter to set it to scatter. And for mode, you want to specify markers because we don't want lines. We want a uh, nice little um, data points. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to update my layout before I run this plot because I want to set my title. So I'm going to set it to uh, non-response rates of the Asian ethnic group across local authorities. And I'm going to set my x-axis and y-axis uh, titles, and I'll set the width and height. So let's go ahead and run this. So nice, you can see that I've got my nice tooltips and maybe I would want to change things. So I might want to um, look at an additional parameter which changes the marker size because this is a little bit small for my liking. Um, so what you can do is you can basically, if you just Google this um, function, it'll tell you all the parameters that it has, or it might be that you can only change the marker size in the layout function. So you can Google those two and find out which specific parameter changes that size. Because right now, probably a little bit small. Um, so tooltips are really useful to include when you've got extreme outliers, like in this case. So that's why it's quite interesting to include this non-response total and this ethnic group total, because for the Isles of uh, Scilly, we've got um, you know only six Asian uh, citizens there. And because four of them have not responded, that's meant that we've got this super high non-response rate. So. It's nice to include other uh, bits of the data frame on your tooltips because it can give some nice um, sort of contextual information if you've got any outliers. So you can see every time we hover over it, we get um, the name of our local authority and how many um, Asian residents within that local authority didn't respond and how many there are in total there. So let's see what time we're on. Oof. Um, hopefully, if you guys are all right, if I... Um, I can stick around a bit later for the Q&A, so hopefully you guys are okay if I just maybe over run by um, five or ten minutes, but I will try and be quick with that. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is to implement a drop down. OK, so um, what we're going to do is use Plotly's update menus in conjunction with the update method to create a nice little drop down next to the graph where we can switch between the Asian ethnic group and the white ethnic group, which might be interesting to make some comparisons with. So um, the first thing that we'll need to do um, is start by creating a plotly figure with no data or no variables specified. That's because we're going to use something called add trace. So you can see that down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our two sets of data points to the plot. So traces refer to a set of data. So for our example, we want to add a trace with the data points relating to our Asian ethnic group and another one for our white ethnic group. So this will start to make some sense when we look at the code below. But for now, let's initialize our blank Plotly figure. So if you just run Plotly, just that function with no parameters, this is the outcome that you get. So you can see it gives you a load of warnings. It's just trying to let you know that you've not specified anything. We've just got this blank. Uh, building block here. That's what we're going to put our traces onto, our sets of data. What we're going to do now is we also want to, our drop down to include um, the ethnic group um, for our white residents too. So we're just going to filter the data frame and only keep rows in which the uh, white ethnic group is, um, is um, involved. And we'll just call this data set white just for the ease of um, use. Um, We'll check it out and yep we can see that our filtering has worked right so now i've got our asian data set on our white data set so let's go about adding these traces so the first thing we're going to want to do is pipe that um 
the initial blank figure, you're going to pipe that to this add traces function, okay? Then you're going to set the data. So um, it's just like we did before. What data set are we working with? Well, one of our traces, the data points that we want to work with are from the Asian data frame. We'll set our X variable and our Y variable. We'll set our tooltips for that. We'll set the type, we'll set the markers, and we'll give this um, trace a name. So I've just named it Asian. And the hover info will set to text. The only other uh, important parameter is this visible parameter. So what this does is it sets the initial visibility of each trace when the plot is first rendered. So what I want to do when this plot is first re rendered is I only want to see those uh, data points that pertain to my Asian data frame. OK, so I set that trace to true. The only difference here uh, when I add a trace for my Y ethnic group is I set that to false because I want the initial um, data points to only show that from the Asian data frame. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. Nice. So you can see that um, we only see those points from the um, Asian data frame. Um, I probably do want to play around with the size of this. I'm not sure I change it in this uh, following code, but you can see um, right now, um, you know, I, it's not really uh, that proportionate on that x axis. So I probably would want to change that um, in the, the final sort of like um, the final layout. Anyway, so let's um, configure our drop down buttons and implement our update method. So this looks super confusing, um, probably because there's a ton of brackets. That's just because just we're using, um, you know, quite a few uh, parameters. And these parameters have a lot of sort of like lists within lists, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but it doesn't feel that it doesn't feel complex when you're writing out. It's just when you finish it and you're like, yikes, so many um, uh, parentheses. OK, so to add a drop down button for interactivity, you're going to be using that layout function. OK, so you can see we've got the usual layout stuff. I'm going to set my legend to false because I'm using a uh, drop down button to change between things. So I don't want a legend. But this is the important bit for your uh, drop down button. So you can see we've got this update menus parameter. So we're going to supply it with a list. Um, within that is another list, and that involves our uh, type, which we're going to set it to drop down. And then you've got your buttons. So each list entry in um, this list of buttons is the particular button. OK, so you see we've got one um, list entry there for our um, button, which is the uh, going to show our Asian data points. And we've got another list entry for those that are going to show our white data points. Now, you can see that we've got this update method within this first list entry. And that just basically um, specifies that we want to um, make changes to the plot attributes when the button's clicked. What changes do we want to make? Well, we specify these in the arguments parameter. So this first button, what it's going to do is it's going to make the Asian data visible, and it's going to hide the white data. So when you click on the Asian value in the button, that's what it'll do. It's going to hide those um, traces that relate to the um, data points from the white data frame, and it's going to show um, the data for our Asian residents. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add another change. So when I click that Asian button, I want it to change the title too, so that it shows non-response rates of the Asian ethnic group across local authorities. You can see here that I've got my other um, list entry in this button, in this list of buttons. And that's going to be um, so that um, I can show the data points associated with my white data frame. And you can see the only difference here is that I just set that first button to false and the second one to true. So that I'm showing the data points related to this um, data frame, which is going to be um, for those um, white residents. So let's see if it works. So we'll just run this. And you can see you've got a nice nifty little drop down here. And you can change the um, the ethnic group that you want to see. But um, 
let me just figure out how so I probably want to set that width and height in the in the layout too because right now it's looking a little bit stretched I wonder if I can just do that quickly where's my layout that's here so many parentheses um let's do it up here let's go uh, I'm trying to basically align things so it looks neat. Um, we'll see if this works. If it doesn't, it's not my bad. Okay, so yeah, in my opinion, that looks a little bit nicer. So you can see we've got our two sets of data points quite nicely displayed with a drop down button so you can make some easy comparisons there. The last thing I'm going to say, um, we've got two minutes to the end. If you do have any Q&A, um, any questions, sorry, please pop them in the Q&A and I will get around to them. Or you can just put them in the chat and I'll answer them there. But um, I'm going to just uh, talk a little bit about how you can share the interactive graphs that you make online. So if you've made some of these yourself, you're probably going to want to share them with people. Um, so if the first way that you could do that is you could use Plotly's Chart Studio. So what you can do there is you can upload your visualizations from your coding environment and you can get a link to then share them online. Uh, you will need to sign up for an account, but it is free um, unless you do want to share the link privately and you'll need to upgrade your account. So if you've got data that's OK being out in the open, that's quite a good option. But um, another more interesting um, option that I've used is to embed your graphs in GitHub pages. So um, let me just check the chat. What would be default width and height measurements for publications from our studio? Um, I'm not actually sure. Um, for publications from our studio, could you explain maybe a little bit more about what you mean, and I can have a little think on it. Um, yeah, I know that obviously we have for these graphs we've got default sort of like sizes, but I'm not sure in terms of like default measurements for publications. Um, for you, for instance, with these, you can um, you can create like a HTML file um, and it'll, if you click on that, it'll sort of, um, if you want to publish like, you know, your code and um, like if I wanted to um, send this as a link to someone, I can, I've, um, I've hidden the outputs on this by default, but you can um, show the code output too. Um, but it, it doesn't, um, your interactive visualizations will be static on this page, so they won't, um, it's, it's not a way to show or host your visualizations. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure maybe that, I'm not sure if that helps. Um, but if you do want to embed um, your graphs on a site that's actually going to show them uh, moving and you can interact with them, a good way to do that is through GitHub Pages. So I won't go into this fully, but if you are you are interested in doing something like this, I will um, point you to this uh, link here, which is GitHub's tutorial for it. This is what I use to create a GitHub pages for the UK data service, which now acts as a little website where you can sort of show off um, projects like this one. So if I just switch to this, you can see that um, I've created my own little page on a little website link up here, and it shows all the visualizations uh, from this workshop. So you can actually interact with them and hover over data points and they're going to show you the results. Um, I've got a line graph, which I removed because um, it was, um, I didn't think I'd have time. But for those that are interested in um, interactive mapping, this is an interactive map of the, I think it's the percentage of trans men in local authorities across the UK. Now, if that does interest you, um, there's this other notebook here called leaflet underscore map. And that will show you with, I've included lots of explanations because uh, before this, I hadn't worked with geospatial data, data either. And it was massively like, whoa, how do I do this? So I've created this um, notebook, which goes through things really clearly. And at the end, you basically recreate this map here. So if that does interest you and you want to make an interactive map or you're interested in just learning more about it, then please do uh, follow that. Um, link as well um, to this notebook, which you can go through. It's interactive as well. 
just for exporting graphs that we'd want to include in publications report, is there standard measurements for this that all included graphs should meet? Or does it matter if graphs are of different sizes in the same report? Um, that is a really good question. Um, I, I I don't actually know. And I'm sorry I can't um I can't answer that. Um but yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that. Does anyone um maybe someone else in the chat might know? Uh, any academics in here? Um I probably should know, to be honest, but um that might be um could be a question for chat GPT probably. Um I bet if you asked um but if you ask ChatGPT, it'd probably be able to give some good advice. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. Um, that link basically in the chat will um, will take you to this interactive notebook. You can see we've got all these uh, folders on the side, um, and you can run all of them that that, uh, that end in IPYNB. So any of these that end in IPYNB, you can run through this um, interactive notebook. You didn't see what you were showing earlier. Oh, yeah. But it is. I can show you um, GitHub now that I've logged in. Let's see, GitHub. So, yeah, what I was showing you before basically is that um, this is the uh, repository for this workshop. So, it gives you basically a little bit of information about what's um, involved in it. And it's got these two little links here. So, that link there is just going to open what I've just shown you there. So, it's going to take you to that interactive coding notebook. This is just a GitHub page which shows you some of the interactive visualizations that I've made. So I can also pop this link for the, um, I'll pop that link in there for our GitHub um, for this particular repository. So if you are familiar with GitHub, what you can do is you can clone it. So you can basically get a copy of all those folders on your own machine, which allows you to then run that code in your own coding environment without having to use Binder. Um, we just use um, Binder because it's like quite interactive and, um, you know, you don't have to set up any, you don't have to install anything or set anything up. So it's quite easy in that respect. So, yeah, I suppose, is there any more questions? I know we've run over by about 10 minutes. I don't want to keep anyone, um, but equally, I'm happy to stick around if there's any questions that you might have or, um, yeah, please, please let me know. If not, um, feel free to leave whenever you want. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, your comments in the chat. Um, glad that you're really glad that you found it useful. And yeah, check out some of our other resources too. Um, but yeah, thanks so much to everyone for joining. And um, yeah, hopefully see you again at um, some more workshops.